Lord. Move mightily in every life, in every heart, in every mind. Father, I pray that you would anoint my heart, my mind, and my lips, Lord, and use me tonight, Lord, as a vessel in your hands. And I ask it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. I was, it's been already about two, three weeks. The Lord had been dealing with me on this, this subject that I'm going to be speaking to you about. And uh, I remember years ago, probably a good 20, 25 years ago, I ministered a message similar to this, but not like this. But it, it contains the same application. And what I mean by the same application is there's, God always gives us a way of victory. How many believe God always gives us a way for victory? Amen. And you and I, you and I have got to, we've got to see what he does, what he uses. Our ways are not his ways. Okay, our ways are not his ways. And sometimes we want to use our natural ways, our natural instincts, uh, you know, and, and, it, and it doesn't work. Believe me, it doesn't work. All it does is get you deeper. But, but if you do what God says, listen to me, it's always different. It's always opposite of what the world would do. But if you do what God says, listen to me, you'll have victory. Amen. And I'd rather have victory. Anybody else? I would rather have victory. Praise God. So in Psalms 34, I want you to go with me there. Psalms 34. We're going to read a few verses here. Amen. Because most Christians don't understand that the, the battle, the battle before it is out here, the, the defeat comes in here. Before we're defeated out here, we're defeated inwardly. Okay? Before, listen to me, before you have victory out here, you got to have victory in here. Amen. Right here. Okay? Before you can have victory out there, you got to have it in here. Most people are defeated because they're defeated in here. And, 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 and listen, God wants you to have victory over everything. And, and one of the things that I want you to understand is that, is that if you fail the first time, God will take you through it again. And if you fail a second time, he'll take you through it a second time or a third time until you finally wake up and say, oh, I understand now. I have to believe the word. All right? Okay, are you with me? I said, are you with me? Listen, you, I think one of the things you need to do is to stop going to your friends to find out what they think. Because the, your friends are just human like you. And, and most of the time your friends are, are walking in, in defeat or, or they're trying to get victory somehow also. Amen. Are you with me? But if you go to Jesus, if you go to the Lord, listen to me, you're going you're gonna to always have victory. How many know that the Lord has never been defeated? He has never been defeated. Come on, give him a big praise. Jesus Christ has never been defeated. All right, so in Psalms 34, we're going to read a few verses there. And it says it like this. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Now look at this. I will bless the Lord at all times. How am I going to bless him? How do you bless the Lord? He tells you right there. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. How do I defeat the enemy? I defeat him with praise. Come on, give him praise. Give the Lord praise. You see, we're wanting God to come down and beat up the devil. And, and the Lord is saying, no, I want you to beat him up. But I want you to beat him up the way I tell you. Okay, not the way you want to, but the way I'm telling you. All right? Now, you that are married need to understand that your husband is not the devil. And neither is your wife. 
All right? So you're not going to beat them up. All right? Praise God. So, so look what he says here. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. That means that every, every believer has to do that. It's not just some, but it's all of us. If we're going to walk in victory and in, 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 in total, in total uh, able to totally always walk with God and, and have God's response the way we need it, you've got to walk in this. And he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Listen, not the negative. If we were to look at each other tonight, we could find something wrong with everybody. How many understand that? I, I, I kind of like something that Pastor Daniel or Brother Daniel uh, Revokawa said the other day. He says, we always think we're perfect, but the other person's messed up. But in reality, I want to tell you something. No one is perfect. I said no one is perfect. All right? Because no one is perfect. Listen to me. We got to follow instruction. We got to be the kind of people that will follow the instruction of the Lord. And so he says that right there. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. How are you going to bless the Lord? How are you going to bless the Lord? He says, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, now I know, I know, listen to me. I know that we all come short of the glory of God. Some of you are thinking that. Well, you don't understand. You know, my, my circumstance is, is bigger than his. No. Our God is bigger than anything. How many understand our God is bigger than anything? Give him praise. See, and, 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 when, and you're not used to that. You're not used to praising him for everything. You're used to, you're used to battling with people. You're used to, you're used to getting angry and, and voicing things and voicing your opinion and saying things. You're used to that. We're all used to that. Now don't look at me like you're a saint because I know you're not. You do that same. We're used to doing that. But see, but see, listen to me. The more you do it, the more accustomed you get to do that. And I want to tell you something. You know, for years, we, we, we were taught that, that we could do better than that. And all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but I, I start noticing people everywhere, they think it's normal. They think God is accepting those things. Listen to me. The devil is using those things to defeat you. He's using them to defeat you. Anybody home? And you and me, we've got to be trained. Say trained. Because it's not, it's not normal for you to think better of somebody that you know has a lot of flaws. It's not normal. Anybody home? It isn't normal. Amen. And, and so we got to look at ourselves, say, look at myself. I have to look at myself and I have to correct my own. Say my own. Okay. You're, God didn't tell you to correct anybody else. He just told you to love them. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Amen. I want to show you. Praise God. Man, you know, lately, they've, they kind of wanted me to eat differently. They kind of wanted me to. Once in a while, I'll sneak out and get me something good to eat. That's a flaw I have. That's a fly I have, man. I said, I can't, man, I got to eat something, man, that, 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 that really satisfies my, my, you know. Yeah. 
What did you say? Uh, but, 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 but check this out. Check this out. They want me to eat vegetables. No bread. No mayonnaise. No, no salad dressings. I, I mean, let me tell you something. I'm looking at that and I'm saying, wow, my God. And, and, and I sit down with everybody else, and everybody else eating burritos, smothered with chili, and, and, and man, and, and French fries, and baked potatoes with butter. And, and I'm looking at that, and I'm saying, wow, man, this is heavy duty. But my flaw is that once in a while, I'll, I'll sneak out, man, and I'll say, no, but I got to get me something good, man. I got, this is, this is, this is just not hitting it. <laughs> What's in a great while? Like once a day. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning, listen to me, I'm, le- I'm learning to I'm learning to change for health reasons. Listen to me because I want to get healthy. I'm learning to change, all right? Uh, and and, and th- the same way that you and I have to learn to change from the negative to the positive. From the complaining to the praising. Give him praise. Come on, give him a big praise. Complaining don't get you nowhere. Praising does. Praising him does. You know, I enjoy I enjoy my time alone in the mornings. I enjoy that time at home uh, because then I, I can I can yell if I want to. Jesus! You know, I can go crazy at my house and everything, and, and it's all right. All right? But praise God, we got to learn how to, we got to change. Say, I got to change. Because I, I got to walk in victory. Listen to me, I got to walk in victory. Otherwise, you're always going to be, listen to me, you're always going to be, this is the devil, you're always going to, to always look at others down, and you'll cover yourself, you'll cover what you are you'll cover that up by somebody else or listen to me or the devil will get in there and you'll start disliking people anybody with me years ago i remember my pastor preached a message and we're going to touch a little on that but not 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 so uh, hopefully i'll get there but years ago i remember my pastor preached a message on forgiveness. I was a good message, man. I was sitting in the front like that, you know. I was sitting there, man, I said, that message is so heavy duty, man. I said, man, that, everybody here ought, ought to fall in love. Everybody ought to have a north of love, man, and everything with that message. And, and, and I'm sitting there, man, I, I don't have nothing against nobody, man. And I'm just sitting there minding my own business, you know, like I always do. Okay, and, and, and then he's making the altar call. And he says, he says, you know, we need to come to this altar and ask the Lord to forgive us for all that. He says, but you know what, before we do, he says, you need to go and ask that person for forgiveness that you got something against. All right, are you with me? And so, you know, I'm standing there, I have my eyes closed, you know, and then I hear my pastor laughing. Because I was real close to the altar. I wasn't that far from the altar. And I could hear him laughing. And I'm saying, what the world is he laughing about? This is unforgiveness, man. What's he laughing about? (laughs) So I opened my eyes. And the whole church was lined up in front of me. (laughs) The whole church. I offended them with my flaws because they were perfect. 
Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? And my pastor was laughing. I must have took about two hours. Yes, I forgive you, brother. <laughs> and, and I'm saying to myself, wow, this is, I've never seen anything like that in my life. That was an episode I went through. So I want you to see this. I want you to see this with me because praise is a weapon. It's, it's not just, you know, so you can, you know, w- you know, just stand there like you're in a daze and all that. No, it's a weapon against the devil. And, and the devil is hoping that praise does not become a part of your life. Now, I know we sing songs of praise, and that's powerful. And I, I, I was hearing Sister Becky from there that, uh, you know, the, the, the praise songs and all that. But see... That's wonderful. We, we sing praise songs, fast songs. I love the fast songs. But what he's talking about is something more deeper. He's talking about how you talk, what comes out of your mouth. You know, you've got, you've got, to, you've got to watch your, your voice. You've got to watch what you're saying. Because you'll defeat yourself. You'll defeat yourself. Yeah. See, if, if, you, if, you, if you sit around with others and all you do is negative, 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 all you're doing is killing your soul, killing your spirit, and, and opening the door for the enemy to continue hitting you. How many know we, we can't do that? Yeah. I have enough problems with myself. I don't need any more problems from the devil. Come on. I have no problems trying to sneak out and eat. I don't need more problems from the devil. All right, are you with me? Okay, so, so imagine he's saying this. Let's read verse 2. Look at verse 2. My life, my life makes its boast in the Lord. And I, I, I looked up that word and there was only one meaning to that whole word in the whole dictionary and it means, I brag on the Lord. I brag on the Lord. I brag on the Lord. Man, we serve an awesome God. We serve a big God. My God is awesome, man. He, he, he's with us. He's with me. He takes care of us. He heals us. He delivers us. Come on, is there anybody here? I mean, He helps us. Come on, anything you need, God opens the door. What an awesome God. I said, what an awesome God. I said, what an awesome God. See, see when, when, somebody, when somebody attacks you in some way, listen to me. Praise God. Levanta el Señor. God, I love you. Praise God. You know what? The devil hates that. Because he's, he's looking for a negative response out of your life. Are you with me, church? He's looking for a negative response out of your life. Whatever happens, he, your car breaks down. I had a car. Believe me, I had a car. Man, that car tried me. It tried me. And I defeated the car. I'm the car defeater. They gave me a car. For, to go to work. It was a nice car, but, but the only difference was you couldn't take the key out of the ignition because, because it wouldn't come out. <laughs> and it was a nice car. Good on gas. And, and I remember this car. I would drive it, Loriama, brother, and, and every morning I could tell you in my heart which tire was going to go flat? I'm serious. They would take turns. I had that car. I had that car like maybe about a year. And I used to work. I, I was living here, and I was working in Brighton. And I used to have to drive to Brighton. Now check it out. It was nice. It was a good car. I, I'd go all the way to Brighton with no problem. 
But in the morning, when I get up to get in the car, and remember, I have to start it up to warm it up because in the winter it was kind of cold. I'd warm it up. I started, but the key was staying there. All right, and and I knew I knew I we lived around the corner from a gas station, so I would drive right there, right there, real quick, and put air in that tire, the tire that would be flat. They took turns. I would, I would, I would fill that tire up, brother. And I'd be on my way to work, and I'd get to work, and when I'd get off, I'd look at the car. I said, I know by this evening, this tire here is going to be flat. And, and sure enough, I'd, I'd get out of work. The tire was flat. So I'd go to a station right down the street right there, put air in it, and I'd go home. The next morning, the back tire was flat. That, that was the mystery of the flat tires. <laughs> Each, they would take turns, brother. That, that evening, I'd be coming home, and it'd be the back driver's side tire. They would all take turns getting flat. And I said, wow, this car's a trip, man. I had it for a year. And, and that car just kept getting flat. And, and uh, so one day... They stole it. The, the, key, the key wouldn't come out of the ignition. So they stole the car. And I, I was kind of glad. <laughs> I was tired of playing merry-go-round with that car, man. And anyway, they stole the car. The cops found it right here on First and Knox. They found it right there on the side of the road with a missing tire. They, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. The Lord is my witness. The, the tire was missing. And he said, they must have stole your car, Jim, because they needed a tire. And I said, well, I hope the tire doesn't go flat on them, you know. <laughs> they, they, so they, they, they said, we would have waited for you to come pick the car up. But since it didn't have a tire, we had to tow it in. So they towed it in. I went over there, paid to get it out. I had to buy a tire with a rim. Now check this out. I had to buy a tire with a rim, a brand new tire with a rim. Never been on that car. Never. And I put it on. I got in it, man. I'm going down 6th Avenue. And in my heart, I knew that the tire I just put on was going to go flat. He said, se fue pa, pa abajo, brother. The tire flattened. I finally put air in it, got home. And it was, that was on a Friday. So I said, man, I don't have to drive this car, man, for a whole weekend. So I got home on, I got home on Saturday and the owners of the apartment buildings that I lived at, they thought that the car was junked right there. I don't know how they thought that. Maybe it was flat. <laughs> and they called the wrecker to take the car. And I heard the Lord say, your test is over. <laughs> God used that car. Listen to me. God used that car to put patience in me and to, because, you know, before I'd have blew the thing up. <laughs> they would have tirado una mecha, brother. You know, oh, psh, blow the thing up, you know. But God used that car to teach me. How many know we need to be taught? Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to be taught. All right, look at this. Look at this. He says, he says, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. But verse 2 says, My life, my life makes its boast to the Lord. My life, who you are, everything about you is going to lift up God. 
Come on, is there anybody home? It's going to glorify God. Everything about you is going to, is going to show who God is. You're going to, is there anybody home with me? Come on. My life. My life. I know that some of you have a hard time with that. That's why I told you the car are the, are the flat tires. Because you have a hard time. You have a hard time. Sometimes, man, things go wrong. When you, coraje. you get upset. But God is trying to teach you through every episode. He's trying to teach you how to praise him. Lord, I love you. I praise you. I worship your holy name. I glorify you above all there is. There's nothing greater than you. I'm just sharing sharing with you what I tell God. I I do that. that. That's something I tell God all the time. Nothing, nothing, Lord, you cannot do. I learned to do that through hardships. I learned. God taught me to do that. See, because the natural person, the natural man, listen to me, the human being wants to react differently. We want to react differently. We want to, ah, you know. And sometimes we blow it. Look at the person sitting the time. I think you blew it today. You look kind of, you're kind of staring at Pastor Ray kind of funny. Huh? You see, sometimes, sometimes we don't do it. Sometimes we fail. But that doesn't mean that you're out. It just means that you're going to learn. Come on, it just means that you're going to be going through this until finally you learn. Come on, we have to learn. Give him a big praise. See, people, people are influenced by other things. See, if, 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 you, if you are negative all the time and somebody hangs around with you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to become negative. The, the other person is always going to have a negative idea, a negative thought. A negative input. Are you with me? But if you, but if you are a positive person, if you, if you know God is doing mighty things, great things, He's with us, He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's with us to the end. No matter what comes or what goes, He'll never forsake us. Man, I mean, when you begin to deal with things in that form, listen to me, the other person that hangs with you is going to be the same way. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? We got to be different. We are a peculiar people. Come on, you're, you are a peculiar person. You're not, you're not just a, an ordinary individual, you know, that, no, listen to me. You are a peculiar person. You are born again of the Spirit. You're not born again of the flesh. You're born again of the Spirit. And because you are born again of the Spirit, we have to react in the Spirit. There are some people that believe, that believe they can react crazy and negative and, 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 and ugly and all kinds of things. And then and, and we believe that. This is, and we say, well, that's just normal. That's just who I am. No, 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 no. You are a spirit being. You are born again from above. You are born again. Come on, you're born again. I said you're born again from above. The natural person, the natural person does that. But the spiritual person, the person that walks with God, that lives with God, listen to me, they change. It's not that you never have a fault or you never, or you never have a shortcoming or, or something, but it's that you take 
those things and, and you learn from them and, and, and you turn and you change and, and you try to do better for God. Come on, is there anybody here? Why is that? Why is that? Because listen to me, there's a world out there that acts in the natural. There's a world out there that is born of the flesh. They're not born of the spirit. And they're looking for a way out of all the, all the things they're going through. They're looking for someone that is different. They're looking for someone that, that, that doesn't react the way they do. That doesn't do the things they do. Come on, don't cuss the way they do and all that. Is there anybody here with me, church? And I mean, listen to me. And, 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 and in that form, they're looking for somebody that's different. Peculiar. You're a peculiar person. You're different. We should be different. We should be the same. The world looks at you and they say, man, you know what? You're not, the, you're not like me. You're different. I know you go through problems, man, but you know what? But you react to your problems differently. How many know we get, the world looks at you and they see that. Listen, listen to me. If you want your family saved, let them see a peculiar person. Let them see a different person. Let, come on, let them see a peculiar person, a person that's not going to react the same. Sure, we, there's times we've blown up. There's times I've blown up. There's times I've, I've been, I blew up crazy. But the Lord says, hey, hey, get, get down on your face. Ask me for forgiveness and get up from there and turn around. And Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on. You know what I did with that car? I used to laugh. I used to laugh. People thought, either this guy's peculiar or, or he's loaded. <laughs> I used to look at that car, man. I said, wow, check this car out. I, I, and I knew, I knew in my heart, listen to me, I knew in my spirit which tire was next. <laughs> I'd look at that tire and it was full. I'd go to work and I'd come out and I'd look at the tire and it was flat. But God used that, that car. He used it to teach me. Hello? Is there anybody with me? So, so look at this. Look at this. My life makes its boast in the Lord. My life makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble and afflicted hear and be glad. Let them, let those out there, let those that don't understand, they don't know about Jesus, they don't know how he operates, but let them see you. Let them see you different. And I guarantee you, you'll, you'll impact them. You'll impact them. Anybody with me? I said, you'll impact them. Look at this. Let the humble, let the humble and the afflicted, let the person that's out there that doesn't know how to deal with things, let them hear you. Let them hear you praise him. Let, let them hear you talk good about God. Let, let them hear you. Let them hear you lift up his name. Let them hear you. Is anybody home? Let them hear you. Praise God. And be glad. But why are they glad? Because they found a peculiar person. They found somebody that does things differently. And it's working for them. And if it works for you, it'll work for me. Yes, give him praise. And, and look at this, look at this. Habits, habits aren't easy to break. We have good habits and we have bad habits. See, they're not easy to break. Good habits, you should never break. Bad habits, we should. 
bad habits we don't need. But they're hard to break sometimes. But aren't you glad tonight that because of what Jesus done on the cross and by the precious blood that he shed on that cross, every habit can be broken. Give him praise. Now look at this. Look at this. He says, Oh, magnify. Let's go to verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. How many know what a magnifying glass does? Ah, what does it do? Makes things bigger. All right? Makes things bigger. Haven't you ever noticed, haven't you ever noticed that when you do something good, nobody remembers? But if you do something bad, nobody ever forgets. Haven't you ever noticed? If you do something bad, nobody forgets. But if you do something good, nobody remembers. And, and so this is, this is why, look, at, look up here at me. This is why you should never have your eyes on somebody else. Don't ever measure yourself with somebody else. You have to measure yourself with the word. Don't ever, listen, listen to me. Don't ever put people down and don't ever put people up. Let God do that. That's his, that's his business. Anybody home? Why? Because every one of us is going towards that place to be perfected. We're traveling on that journey. We're traveling on that road to become like Christ. We're trying to do the best we can. But, but listen to me. The, the greatest thing that destroys people, la boca. Anybody home? Okay, look at this. Look at this. We're going to read a few scriptures. Can we do that? All right. I want you to. I want you to. I want you to read with me on the same verse, or the same, the same, uh, that same uh, uh, chapter there. And we're going to go. We're going to go down to verse eleven. We're going to go from verse eleven on down a little bit. Okay. And we're going to go from there. Then we're going to go somewhere else. And I want you to see what he says. He says, come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you. That means that they weren't there yet. They weren't doing that. Okay, they weren't doing that. He says, I will teach you to revere and worshipfully fear the Lord. He says, I got to teach you how to fear God. How many know that fear of the Lord, the fear of God comes into a person's life the, the closer you get to Jesus, the more you fear him. And I mean, but what I mean by that is you reverence him. You, you acknowledge God in everything. Okay? So look, look at this. Let's go on. What man is he who desires life and longs for many days that he may see good? I don't know about you, but I want to see it. All right? Let's go on. Look what it says. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips... From speaking deceit. You know what I noticed? I see a drug addict walk in and they sit over here on this end. I see another one sit over there. One time I told Pastor Eddie, I think, I, I never saw them before. I never knew who they were, but I saw them walk in. One sat over here and one sat over there. They never knew each other, but I told them, what, before the service is over, they're going to click and they're going to leave together. And how many know what happened? Huh? Say it with me, birds of a feather flock together. But the Lord, come on, say it with me, but the Lord has called me to be an eagle. Eagles don't flock with other birds. Yeah. 
Give, give him praise. Other birds sit on the post or on a fence and they hang out together and they talk about everything that everybody does. Right? Did you see that? Did you, know, did you see her do that? Well, she, she thinks she's all that but a bag of potato chips. And, and we're, we're messed up. God didn't call you for that. Say, God didn't call me for that. He knew I'd be better than that. Come on, how many know you, you need to be better than that? How many want to be better than that? How many want to be eagles? Eagles. Soaring high with the Lord. Come on, soaring high. That any time, you know, an eagle, when an eagle feels sick, or, or, or it's damaged, a wing is damaged or something, they say that an eagle will find the highest rock he can get to. And he'll land on that rock and he'll face the sun. And he'll stay there. Because the rays of the sun heal him. Come on, give him praise. Is there anybody here? See, but the other birds, they don't do that. They click. And they kill each other. They kill each other's hearts. And they kill each other's spirits. Hello. Is there anybody here tonight? Look at your neighbor and say, come on. If you're going to hang with me, you better start talking positive. You better start talking about praising the Lord. You better start lifting up the name of Jesus. We're not going to talk, we're not going to, talk to anybody down. Come on, we're going to praise His mighty name. We serve an awesome God. I said, we serve an awesome God. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek, inquire for and create peace. Create peace. I love you all. I mean, you gotta crave, crave peace. Crave peace. How many know, listen to me, the enemy wants you to defeat yourself and at the same time use you to defeat others. And how many know that, that you can't do that? How many know you cannot do that? Come on. Look at this. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are toward the uncompromisingly righteous, and his ears, his ears are open to their cry. We get away from all that. I don't want nothing to do with that. Get away from it. And when you have a need, and you cry out to God, and you ask the Lord, Lord, man, check this out, God, I'm going through this, man. And all of a sudden, the Lord sends the answer. How many know He never fails? I said He never fails. It's like the it's like the lady that, 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 that didn't have no money to buy any groceries. And she's praying. She was from New Hope. And she's on her knees and she's praying. She said, Lord, we need some food for me and my children. We don't have any. And this, this guy, this guy, this guy that was a, 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 a sinner, a big sinner, man. He, this guy was crazy, man. He, he heard her praying. He's, he said, oh. He said, I'm going to show her. So he went and bought a, a ton of groceries. And he brought them to her. And, he, and, and, and she said, oh, thank you, Lord, she says, for the groceries. He said, the Lord didn't give them to you. I did. No, she says, the Lord used you to give them to me. <laughs> God.
God will never fail. I said, God will never fail. Get out of the negative. Sácate de ahí. I said, get out of the negative. Don't, listen to me, don't hang with people. I don't care how old they love me so much. No, 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 no. If they're killing your spirit, get away. Get away and don't wait. Run if you have to. Run from them. Listen to me. Because if you don't get away, listen to me, they're going to damage your heart and pretty soon you're going to be just like them. You're going to be doing what they're doing. You're going to be killing their heart. And when they come to church, all they're going to be looking for is, uh, let me find somebody who thinks they're all that in a bag of potato chips. And they're going to be trying to find fault in them. And, and they're, oh, brother. I had a guy tell me that one day, you know what, Pastor, I saw something in you, man, that I didn't like. I said, you did? I said, man, you must have really been looking hard. I said, because it's hard to find something wrong with me. <laughs> I said, man, that's pesado, bro. I said, I said, but did you find anything wrong with you? I said, I didn't look for anything in you. That's why I didn't look for anything. I said, the one that knows everything is God. Yeah. How many know it's the Lord? I said, how many know it's the Lord? Yeah. You know, one time, when I was with my brother in New Mexico in Grants in his church, we had just had a funeral, a little boy had passed away. And I went and I was with the, that family that night in their home, you know, praying with them and all that. And, and there was a big family. And we were in the kitchen. And all of them were sitting there and they were crying and, and they were talking about, well, this guy died and my dad died and my son died. And they're talking about it and I'm looking at him, man. I'm saying, wow. The, the, their conversation was all about death. And I'm sitting there, and I'm asking myself, and I'm asking the Lord, Lord, how can I help them? How can I encourage them to see beyond that? And all of a sudden, the, the Holy Spirit broke through, used one of those people to bring a message in tongues. And I'm sitting there, And this is what the Lord said. He says, why are you crying for the dead? Why do you cry for those that have already come to be with me? He said, you need to rejoice. Is there anybody here? Anybody home? He says, why are you crying for those who have died and have already come to be with me? Why are you crying over that? I mean, some of these people have died so many years back. And then I remember another family. I was thinking about this for two weeks. I remember another family that my brother called me one morning. He said, you know what? I, I, got, I got something else to do. He said, but this family has to go to Silver City. Their dad is dying in a... In a in, in a veterans hospital. They have a veterans, nice veterans hospital there in Silver City, New Mexico. And he said, can you go with them? It was a big family. And we went. And the, they gave the man, I think, maybe a day, maybe a day or two to live. And uh, we're sitting there and it grieved me because all of them are sitting there and they're already parting everything that belonged to the man. I'm going to take the trailer and you take his car. And, and, and I'm sitting there, man, my heart got grieved. Because this man's still, still alive. And I got so grieved. And I got up from there and I walked outside. They had a beautiful garden outside. I walked outside to that garden. And I'm just walking around looking at the flowers and all that. And I started praying. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, 
would you give this man life again? Would you not let him die? And I thanked him. And I went back into the church. I mean, into the, the waiting room there. And we're sitting there, and these, by, these guys were partying everything, man. You take his money, you take the car, you take the camper, you take this. They were all partying everything. And they grieved me, man. The nurse walked in about 15, 20 minutes after, after I had walked in. And she looked at them and she says, you know, the doctor, <laughs> the doctor told me he was so sorry that you came all the way from Grant to Silver City but he's not going to die. <laughs> Something happened. He came back to life. <laughs> and I looked at him and I'm smiling. Hey, I said, now you got to give everything back. <laughs> ah, anybody home? I mean, isn't that crazy? Uh, don't you think it's crazy, man? I mean, well, okay, I do. All right, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Go with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go to Proverbs. Chapter 4. Verse 23. Look what he says. Keep and guard your heart. Jesus put it like this. He said, it's not what goes out of it. It's not what you, you know, they were trying to say that, that what they ate was, what was sin. And he said, no, that comes out through the back. Through the poo poo, you know. <laughs> but he said, he said it's what it's what comes out of the heart. He said it's it, it's what comes out of the heart. And he says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. Do everything you can to guard your heart. Don't let anybody start contaminating your heart. Don't let nobody start putting that all that crazy stuff inside of you. You have the right to put your, your hand over their mouth and say, this is, I don't want to hear all that. Amen. I want to hear about Jesus. I don't want to hear about all that stuff. Be, listen, tell them, tell them, tell them, were you the one that died for them on the cross? Was it your blood that was shed there? Or can you change them? You see, they can't change them. But I'll tell you one thing, the, the one that can is Him. And if you'll praise Him, and if you'll lift up the name of Jesus, He can work better. Amen. He can do the job. Come on, He can work. He can work for you. And so He says, keep and guard your heart. Keep and guard your heart. Don't let no one pollute it. Amen. Don't let no one pollute it. Listen, good intentional Christians sometimes want to pollute your heart. Don't let them. Don't let them put nothing in there that shouldn't be there. Sometimes we let it in, and you got to get down on your face immediately and tell the Lord, Lord, wash this thing out of me. Wash it out. I don't want it there. It doesn't belong there. Come on, are you with me tonight? So look at this. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all, that you guard it, for out of it flow the springs of life. He said, this is what he's saying, whatever you let in is going to come out of your mouth. If you let the negative in, if all you get into is the negative, if all you get into is the gossip and the slander and the, all the stuff like that, listen to me, the only thing that can come out of your mouth is what you've let into your heart. And, and the Lord is saying, guard it. Protect it. Keep it. Don't let nothing come in there that's going to pollute your heart. He says, I want to be with you. I want to help you. I want to, I want to protect you. I want to supply for you. I want to heal you. I want to lift you up. I want, come on, he wants to do everything he can for us. But listen to me, sometimes we allow this. This is why we're, this is why we're right here. We're, we're doing everything we can right here to change.
I don't think I'm better than anybody. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I'm telling you the truth. But I'm not going to live like them. I said, I'm not going to live like them. Are you with me, church? Everybody in this place has, has committed sin of some sort or another. But listen to me. It don't mean we got to stay in there. It don't mean you got to stay in the sewer line. Come on, you can get out of there. I said, you can climb out of there. You can climb out of there and get to Calvary. Come on, give him praise. Lift up the name of Jesus. You don't have to live there. Guard your heart. Protege tu corazón. Pro protect your heart. Don't let the devil go get in there, man. The, you know, our problem is that we think because these people go to church and they're all so negative, we think that these people are so sainty. And listen to me, you don't see the enemy using them. You don't see what's coming out of there, the venom that's poisoning the depths of your heart from, from what they say. And pretty soon you're, you're spewing that out. Pretty soon you're doing it. Is there anybody here with me? And, and by the time you know it, your, your heart is, is, man, you can't even, you can't, it's so packed with garbage. And you can't even really do what you need to do. You can't praise Him. You get to a point to where no matter what, what he does for you, how good God is. Amen. It's never good enough. Because we can't see beyond the negative. You need to be the kind of person that tells them, you know what, I love you, but I don't want to hear you. I love you, but I don't want to hear the negative. I love you, Man, and I pray that you'll change. But I don't want to be a part of the negative. I want to be a part of the positive. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here tonight? So, so, so imagine what he says. He says, for out of it flow the springs of life. Whatever comes in is going to go out. It's going to come out, church. Jesus said it himself. It's not what comes out through the draught. He calls it the draught. He didn't want to use the other word. He said, the draught. <laughs> he said, but it's what goes in the heart and comes out through the mouth. We say crazy things. I said, we say crazy things. And we're not perfect. You're not perfect. And every time you see something, you say something crazy. Man, get on your face and tell the Lord, forgive me, Lord. Change me. Turn me around. Turn me around. Let me, let me be different. I want to be different. I don't want to be like this. I want to be victorious. I want the world to see a real Christian. I want them to see that I really love you. I want them to see that I really walk with you. It's a mighty God. I say he's a mighty God. Amen. Look at this. Go with me. Go with me to Mark 11, 25 and 26. Are you with me, church? Amen. Go with me there. Mark 11, 11, 25 and 26. Hallelujah. I want to hurry here real quickly because I know some of you, some of you have to eat. <laughs> I'm the only one that don't get to eat. Mark 11, amen, 25 and 26, it says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Say, forgive them. Yes. Forgive them. Yes. And let it drop. Let it go. Yes. Have you ever heard somebody tell you, drop that thing, man, just drop it, let it go. Uh, have you ever heard that? That somebody will say, drop it. Don't say it. Don't, don't think about it anymore. Just let it go. Forgive him and let it drop. Leave it. Let it go. In order that your Father, in order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. And let them drop. Let them drop. 
you know what? You know what? When, 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 when we're over here and you're trying to praise the Lord, Lord, I love you, I love you, but you hate that other brother, you hate that other sister, then the Lord ain't even paying attention. No está poniendo atención. He's looking and he's saying, man, let it go, let it drop so I can help you. How many know he wants to help you? How many know he's the only one that can? In case you didn't notice, in case you didn't notice, the only one that's going to be able to take you to heaven is Jesus. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your failings and shortcomings. Pastor, that man used to beat me up. I, we did crazy stuff. And I can't forgive him. Yeah, you can forgive him. Well, do I have to go tell him to his face? No. That's not what the Bible says. Go back to verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Where at? Where you're praying. Wherever you're praying, forgiveness comes from the heart. I said, have you ever had somebody say, well, I forgive you, but they really don't. And they, they're always looking at you to see if you do it again. Huh? He doesn't want you to go back to the mess. He just wants you to have a clean heart. Say a clean heart. Not the mess. A clean heart. All right. You'll, 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 you'll get it. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 12, 34. What an awesome God. I said, what an awesome God. Praise his mighty name. I said, praise his mighty name. Que bueno es el Señor. I said, God is good. God is good. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Look at this. You offspring of vipers... If I was to tell you that, you're a viper. You would think I'm calling you a car. You offspring of viper. How can you speak good things when you are evil, wicked? Is that the right one? Is that what I said? Let me make sure because I don't want to call anybody a viper. I guess I can. You offspring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil, wicked? For out of the fullness, the overflow, the superabundance of the heart, of the, heart the mouth speaks. Right from here. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome God. Isn't he good? Go with me to Matthew 5.44. We're almost done. We're almost done. Don't go say amen. Look at this. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. See, see, I always tell the church, I've always told the church that I know, I know 
that not everybody in the church loves me. I understand that. Okay, when I got into the ministry, I understood that. Okay, and I understand that wholly, completely. That not everybody in the church is going to love me. I can't help that. Okay, I can't help that. But I can help if I love everybody. See, what I do is what's important, not, not what you do to me. See, if you don't love me, you got to answer to God. Okay, not to me. But I have to answer to God if I don't love you. Is there anybody home? I can help. I can help myself. But I can't help what you do. Anybody home? Están aquí o no están aquí? Look at the neighbor the sitting next to you, pinch them a little bit and find out they're here. Go with me, go with me. Go with me to Romans. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start from verse 32 down. We're almost done here. He who did not, he's talking about the Lord. He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Yes, say yes. yes. He will. Look at this. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? When it is God who justifies that is, who puts us in right relation to himself. Who shall call forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God, who acquits us? Who is there to condemn us? Will Christ, Jesus, the Messiah, who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God actually pleading as he intercedes for us? Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity and distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword? Even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. But I like this. Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors. Semos más que vencedores. We are more than conquerors. And gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. We are more, more than conquerors. Listen to me. When you don't get into all that other stuff... Man, your heart is clean. Man, li li listen to me. You, you can be more than a conqueror. Nothing can conquer you. Nothing can stop you. Why? Because Jesus Christ called you to be more than a conqueror. Now I want you to go with me. One more scripture. We're going to come to this altar. I'm going to have Sister Becky come and the, and, and, and the girls that sing so great. I want them to come up. Look what it says. Psalms 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. David was running from Saul. From mountain to mountain, cave to cave, hiding here and there, doing whatever he could to survive. 14 or 15 years running. And he knew that at any moment if Saul caught him, he was going to be dead. 
And look what he says. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Speak to yourself tonight. And tell yourself tonight, I'm going to praise him no matter what. I'm going to praise him no matter what I'm going through. I'm going to praise him no matter what anybody thinks of me. I'm going to praise him no matter what's happening in this life. I'm going to praise the name of Jesus. I'm going to be more than a conqueror. I'm going to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, are you with me tonight? I'm not letting the devil win this thing. I'm going to praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Let's go to verse 2. Look what it says. While I live, while I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God. While I have any being, as long as I have any life left in me, I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, can you lift up His name? Can you give Him praise? Can you give Him a shout? Can you give Him a clap? No matter what you're going through, no matter who likes you or who don't, no matter who's talking about you, you give Him praise. Give it to Him. Give the Lord praise. He is mighty. He is mighty. Listen, I've learned one thing throughout the years. That I have one that gives me victory no matter what. And there's been times the devil has beat me up. And had me on the ground thinking, man, it's over for you. And listen to me. But there's never been a time that I haven't called on God. And I'm going to tell you something. He's always come through. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here? He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. And look what he says. While I live, will I praise the Lord? I will sing praises to my God while I have any being. While there's any life left in me, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to exalt him. I'm going to lift him up. I don't care what anybody else does. I don't care if they don't want to do it. I'm going to do it. If they don't want to do it, then I'll take the blessing. If they don't want to do it, then I'll be healed. Come on, are you with me tonight? Is there anybody here tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to the mighty name of Jesus. Look at this. Put not your trust in princesses, in son of man, in whom there is no help. When his breath leaves him, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his previous thoughts, plans, and purposes perish. Happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is he who has the God a special revelation to Jacob for his help, whose hope, whose hope is in the Lord his God. How many know he's the one? I said he's the one. I said he's the one. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Who keeps truth and is faithful forever. Let's go on. He executes justice for the oppressed. Who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets free the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the uncompromisingly righteous, those upright in heart, and in right standing with Him. The Lord protects and preserves the stranger and temporary residents. He upholds the fatherless and the widow and sets them upright. But the way of the wicked He makes crooked, turns up, uh, upside down, and brings to ruin. How many know you can praise him? I want you to stand with me for a moment. And I'm going to have my brother way back there. I want you to come up here. And there were some others that need a prayer. I want you to come. I want you to come up here. I know there was somebody else that needed prayer. Where is she at? She's right there, sitting down. 
Hallelujah.